What is up, Watch Fam, and welcome to episode 130 of Ask TNH. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, uh, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite watches from Vacheron Constantine. But before we do, a quick wristwatch check. I am wearing a Rolex, uh, reference 1601, with a beautiful silver dial. Uh, it's a two-tone watch. What is just so downright incredible about this watch uh, is the yellow gold color. Uh, because this watch was purchased uh, and then put directly in a safe, its metal was never exposed to any more oxygen. So the yellow gold took on this burnt orange color, and to me, it is just absolutely incredible. This is probably one of the most amazing date justs I have ever owned. So go on and check out the shop uh, after this video, even if to just look at some of the watch porn photos uh, on the site. So that's it. Now let's get into today's uh, conversation. So today we're going to be talking about a Vacheron uh, that is incredibly valuable, I think, uh, not just in its build or its construction, but the function that it could serve in a collection. This is the Vacheron Quai de Lille. De, de Lili, I don't know, Anna, please put the name right there. Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce it. I looked it up on, on several different websites, look for pronunciation, and unfortunately, I am unbearably ignorant, apparently. So uh, I, I do apologize for my, my butchering. I'm just gonna call it, you know, the watch or the Vacheron from, from here on out for the rest of the conversation. So this Vacheron has become, I think, increasingly important or interesting to me uh, recently because of the price. Uh, retailing at almost $15,000, $14,900, which in and of itself is a very interesting price point. Um, this watch is now trading around 11 uh, on either the aftermarket or on the gray market. So to me at $11,000, uh, anything from Vacheron is very interesting to talk about, especially if it's modern uh, and especially if it has all the qualities that this watch has. So let's, let's actually get into it. Uh, it's powered by the Vacheron in-house in caliber uh, 5100, which is, if you have a look at it, an amazing, amazing movement. Uh, I, I, I think that they executed it super well. Not only of course, did they have the Cote de Genève, but to me what was so kind of like striking and almost mesmerizing uh, was, was the cutting of the plates. I mean, it, it's just, it's not sharp. It's not like Dufour with this very like pointy kind of thing. It was just very like almost oceanic. Uh, and I love that. I don't see that very often. I feel like the plates are, are so often either kind of like cut sharp or, you know, intentionally uh, in a very beautiful way or they're boring, you know, and, and this wasn't. This is such a, such a free flowing, you know, movement design that, that I immediately kind of fell in love. It is an automatic watch, which is also extremely important. Uh, it has a Geneva seal. So, I mean, it, all around, I mean, this watch was built not only to function to the highest, you know, Swiss standards, but to be in form, just stunning. To expect anything more from Vacheron would be ridiculous. And the fact that this movement uh, could be had in a watch at $11,000 is, is basically absurd. I think that the stationary date is extremely well executed, much better than a date window. I love how the disc of the arrow, which is really kind of very, you know, secret and, you know, refined, uh, just kind of circulates. I think it's just a very nice touch, something you don't see very often at all. I think the case is beautiful, 41 millimeters uh, in diameter, and I believe 11 and a half uh, in, in thickness. It, it's, it's not small by any means, uh, but still certainly it's not an oversized watch. And then available in two different colors, uh, black and white, uh, both have a couple of different uh, shades or tints of, of, of the black or the white, something with the little grays in the mix to add some depth. Uh, I think that overall both dials are extremely well executed. I think that the white looks more interesting because of the, the little bit more contrast within the dial, but both are absolutely stunning. The, ca the case is that this watch is absolutely beautiful, in my opinion, uh, and, the, and the movement matches. And yet still, we're talking about an extremely aggressive price point. So let's get more into why I think that this watch is so uh, you know pretty uh, to begin with. I, I love the sportiness mixed with the contemporary kind of refined aesthetic. I think it balances the two very well. Uh, this watch to me goes just as well uh, with, uh, with a suit and tie uh, as it might with, um, with just a regular Oxford shirt, you know, just regular Oxford shirt jeans and sneakers, you know, frankly. And that's a pretty big range, especially at that price point and its competitors. So, so who are the competitors? Uh, you have the Admar Piguet 15400. Uh, you have the Petit Philippe Aquanaut, not at that price point, I mean, a little bit more, but talking about the low end of these, you know, super luxury brands. Uh, so you have the Aquanaut, uh, you have the, the 15400 from Admar Piguet, um, you have Long and Zone. You have maybe 1815 reference. Uh, so there are, there are three watches right there that can be had somewhere in the price point below $15,000-ish, 
uh, and from a top, top tier brand. The Admar Piguet Royal Oak, although you could wear it with a suit in an Oxford, is objectively an aggressive, sporty, sporty watch. It does not ride those lines well. It's an aggressive watch. Yes, of course you wear it with a suit in an Oxford, whatever, but it's an aggressive, sporty watch. By no means is it a dress piece. The Aquanaut as well. Could you wear it with a suit? George Soros does, so yes. But still, uh, it's, it's, it's a sports watch, no doubt. It does not ride this fine line. The Langazone, 1815. It can also be warmer than Oxford in a suit, but it does not ride a line. It is objectively a dressy watch. Watch. I mean, there is no question. The Vacheron Constantine here, to me, is in this middle, this really refined, beautiful, sporty meets, ref, you know, classic refined kind of aesthetic, better than the rest. And because of that, it allows you to have less watches, if you would like, of course. In my opinion, when you buy the Long and Zone 1815, you also will eventually be on the market for something very sporty uh, because you need balance. Well, well, most people want to have balance. Uh, it would be totally reasonable to get a Long and Zone and maybe get a GMT, right? To, 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 to balance you out there. With the AP, it would make sense to have a 15400 as well as something, you know, a little bit more, you know, on the, on the refined side, uh, maybe like a Jeje Le Coultre, right? But with this Vacheron, Really, you need no other watch. Of course, to take a step back, you don't need any of these watches to begin with, but when you are dealing with a luxury consumer, uh, people who do spend a lot of money on watches and to check boxes and, and, and to realize other styles, uh, this Vacheron does a better job than the rest of those watches at playing these two sides of the line. And that, to me, is extremely impressive. So not only is it a top quality watch, it's less expensive than its competitors. Uh, by competitors, I mean watches finished to this level from top tier brands, but it's more versatile. So for $11,000, not only are you getting uh, you know, a, a flat out fantastic watch, but one that has so much range to play with. I think it's kind of like a which which ceramic Daytona do you prefer? Both are awesome, but people just have the camps that they like to live in, the black or the white. So overall, to bring it all back in, at $11,000, you have the opportunity to own, it sounds like a sales pitch, you have the opportunity to own a watch from a top, top tier manufacturer with a movement that has no compromise, strategically cased in steel, which I think was a very good move. I need no white gold. That is also so versatile that really, you know, although this sounds like a very like you know, first world kind of like problem or kind of mentality, saves you from being as pressured to go and balance out your collection. When you have an AP, you might want to get a Jeju Le Coultre. Uh, when you have a Langa, you may want to get, uh, you know, a Rolex uh, GMT Master. With this, Sure, you can add some more watches, of course, and everyone, people typically will, but it still achieves so much with its design in respect to versatility that I feel like you get an incredible amount. From the cushion case and the cuts within it to the dial, which was executed not only beautifully, but with an interesting factor with the execution of the date, it all, it just, it just seems too good to be true. It really does seem too good to be true. Almost everything that I look for in a watch was executed well. I would call this watch a buy, $6,000 more. I would call this watch a buy above retail, and yet uh, and yet, well below, well below retail, retail's 15, this is at sale for around 11 now. Uh, that's just an incredible opportunity. I do not own any Vacheron Constantine. I do not sell Vacheron Constantine. I have no interest uh, in you buying Vacheron Constantine, but uh, as, as a watch geek, as someone who is so passionate about value uh, and, and, and getting the most per dollar, this watch, especially at the price it's being traded at now, represents, in my opinion, an incredible opportunity. So if you're so inclined uh, to drop 11 grand uh, on a watch, then I think that this might be something that you should consider. Thank you guys so much for watching Ask TNH episode 130. Uh, don't forget to check out the watches in the watch shop at theoandharris.com, particularly the close-up photos, the bracelet's a little big right now, uh, the close-up photos of this uh, Rolex date just because it's just magnificent. Thank you guys again.